So I want to go over six black hat SEO techniques you should try, of course, at your own risk because black hat SEO is a bit risky. But first, I want to go over uh, why and when they stop working and then why they work so well. And finally, of course, what the six strategies are and how you can use them and implement them into your business. First things first, there's two main reasons uh, as to when these black hat SEO strategies stop working, right? They're super effective, but eventually they stop working. Well, the very first one is because when everyone is doing them, it becomes sort of irrelevant and useless. For example, PBN links, which is another strategy that I'll speak about um, in a bit, right? PBN, so private blog networks, uh, they still work very well, right? But they used to work extremely well way back when, when not a lot of people were doing it, right? So it was it was this new thing, it was easy to do, right? The, the results were just insane. But now with more people doing it, well, you have to compete with the other guys doing it, and so it becomes harder, right? But I will talk about that later on. Just know that when a new technique comes on, right? into the market, right? It will work great for the first couple of months, maybe first couple of years, but then its effectiveness will, will drop down as more and more people use it, which is, of course, only natural, right? The second thing is um, when, of course, Google, Bing, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Rock, any any search engine, when they crack down on it, right? Uh, when when they, they, they feel like and they analyze uh, and see people uh, trying to game the system, and for example, now it's no, I wouldn't say easy, but it's easier to game these uh, AI search engines uh, over over Google or Bing. And you can go watch uh, this video right here, which basically breaks down how you can basically rank, or not rank, but be cited or recommended or mentioned on Grok in just around 10 minutes. I, I recorded a video showing you how I'm doing it. Now, it is sort of a black hat technique. I wouldn't say, I would, I would call it gray hat is what I, I guess. Or I wouldn't even call it a, a, a color. I'll just say something that it's so easy, right, that eventually going to become useless because everyone's doing it and they'll crack down on it on how easy it is and they'll want to improve the product so just know that these these are two, the two instances when um black hat seo strategy stop working and i did i did want to mention this here because they're super effective just know that if you're maybe searching through forums or old videos of mine or any other people's videos um they might be outdated right now why do they work so well why does black hat seo Works so well. Now it's risky because if you're caught, you're gonna your your site can tank, so you lose all the efforts you put in, right? But why did it work so well? Well, the very first reason is because it makes you test new stuff that you otherwise wouldn't, and that's just the 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 play with with, with business in itself, right? It's the more stuff you test, the more new stuff you test, right? The more likely you are to succeed, right? In this case, for example, the more stuff you test with Grok, the more stuff you test with GPT, the more, if you try building links to, to YouTube videos, see if they rank. If you try um, converting videos into shorts and then syndicating them to social media to see if they rank on Grok, if you try producing blog posts about your competitors, like all this stuff that I talk about on this channel, which I won't cover right now, you can watch all my courses that are for free here on the channel, right? All this constant testing and constant iteration and constant wanting to try and find new stuff, right? Because of that, right? Because you're always trying to find new stuff, right? Eventually, you, you'll come up and you, you'll, you'll find something that works very well that not a lot of people know about, right? And so if you're one of the few people that know about it and it works, right? Well, you'll see instant success with it in the case of, of ranking on the, on the search engines or just getting more traffic, right? But... Again, going back to this, right, as soon as it becomes more popular and everyone knows about it, well, it stops working. But in the first place, the reason why it works so well is because you are one of the very few to do it, okay? And second, why it works well is because, listen, SEO strategies don't work because they're inherently special, Like right? None of the strategies that I share here on the channel work because they're special, right? They work precisely because few people are using them, right? When an SEO technique or tactic is unique, it grabs attention, stands out, and creates leverage, right? It's all about leverage. But the moment everyone else discovers the same tactic and search engines find about it and don't like it, right, it loses its edge, right? So suddenly, what was once a fresh and effective strategy becomes common and invisible. So these are all more or less related, right? Now, it's not to say that some of the Black Hats techniques that have been around for ages still don't work. They do, but they're many. They're much more risky. For example, SAP links, which we'll talk about in a bit, right? They're very risky, right? When they first came out, they weren't really that risky. I mean, they were a bit risky, but they're now nowadays are way, way, way riskier because these guys have found ways to see what you're doing, basically. So hopefully, this makes sense so far. This little intro, okay? Now on over actually actual uh, six strategies, and the very first one is of course 
saplings. Now, what these are, and these are pretty shady, but they do work insanely well, uh, is basically links from a, a Russian network, Russian marketplace. And what they did was they basically hacked sites, and they still do this, right? They hack sites, right? And on the hacked sites, which of course have high DR, high metrics, right? They put a link in the footer, hidden in some way, to your site. So they hide it in a way that the site owner can't really notice it. So, for example, someone else right now could literally hack um, journalists say right here, they could hack our site, right? We, 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 I think we have like a DR of 60, which is pretty decent, and we're a, a notable brand, right? They could hack our site and place a link down here in the footer, right, to any other people that wanted to buy the, the links from them. If that makes sense, right? So they hack the site and they put a link here in the footer, footer excuse me, or any other hidden page. They usually put it in the footer, footer excuse me, because the footer is on every single page, so they get multiple links. Um, so... That's that. That's the the safe links again. Links from a this Russian network marketplace where the guys would hack sites and uh, and give you links on uh, all these mega mega authoritative brands. Uh, a, a hefty price, and of course you are, you are charged on a monthly basis to uh, keep the links up. So that's just how it works. Now, how can you get them? Well, just search. I'll even do it right now. Uh, buy safe links. Now there's going to be a couple of links here. Forget the ads, right? There you go. Safe.ru. So this one works. Uh, what else? I mean, you can, yeah, this one works as well. So you, you can just search for it. I won't give you any suppliers uh, in specific, but you get the point. It's pretty risky. It does work because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, excuse me, it's links from extremely powerful sor sources. Now, I don't recommend you do this because it might be illegal. So I'm not endorsing you to do this. I'm just giving you this for entertainment purposes only. So there you go. Um, right. And by the way, I've never tried this. I've known people who have that might have worked great for them, but I've never done it before, uh, just because it's too risky. Now, second one, uh, use expired domains to set up a site. Now, this is pretty cool, and I've done this in the past. So what essentially an, an expired domain is, right? It's, let's say, for example, tomorrow, um, I stop paying uh, our domain register for, for journalist AI. So tomorrow, it goes, again, to the marketplace, and you who are watching this video can go and buy tryjournalist.com, right? Now, you would be uh, purchasing an expired domain. So I let the domain expire, and you, like a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, you bought it. So you bought the expired domain. I let the domain expire. I, didn't, I did no longer renew it for whichever reasons, right? And you bought it, right? Now, this happens a lot with like old businesses, right? For example, let's say, for example, I stop working on this, and I just, I don't sell it. I just, maybe I sell the code to someone, who knows, right? And they, 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 Forget about renewing the, renewing the domain, whatever, right? For whichever reason, right? And uh, it goes back to the marketplace, and this happens a lot with a bunch of like uh, a bunch of different businesses, right? Uh, you can go watch this video right here, which breaks down exactly how I find these expired domains, because it's a science to it, right? It's not just about finding domains that are expired. There's a bunch of, I guess, filters you put on you put on it, like uh, how old was the, is the domain? What are the metrics of the domain? What's the traffic? Looking at the Wayback Machine, so looking at this, using this free tool that allows you to put a domain in there, so it's this tool called Wayback Machine, where I, you can put any domain here, and I'll, I'll do a test right here real quick, and you can see what the site was before. So I can see if this expired domain, maybe back in 2023, was like a, a Russian casino spammy site. And if so, that's not a very good expired domain. But again, on this video right here, I explained to you what all this means why it matters, and if you want to go and do uh, this uh, expired domain technique, well, uh, you can. It is very effective because, in essence, what you're doing, right, this is how the site looked like last year or two years ago, uh, but in essence, what this is, is you are purchasing a previously very powerful domain with real traffic, real metrics, right, uh, real pages, real content, that for whichever reason it, it expired, there's infinite reasons why that happens, right, you registered, and then you set up your site on top of it. Now, the reason why this is good is because when you're starting out with a site, a new site, there's nothing on it. No content, no previous history, no backlinks, nothing, right? If you go for an expired domain, so just buy the domain, right, and then set up your brand on top of this, right, you just set up a new site, right? You, the only thing you have to, of course, remain the same is the actual URL, right? Um, but again, you have all these backlinks from years back linking back to you. Uh, you have a bunch of like a, a very edge domain, so it's... I, maybe, hopefully this is making sense. Basically, you're acquiring an age-old asset that's very valuable. And if you revive it, so if you re-register the domain, set up the site again, well, it's going to be way, way easier to rank. And I did this when I was doing local SEO. So when I was doing Rank and Rent, you can, which you can go watch this video right here, which breaks down what Rank and Rent, and rent is and how it works and how you, can make, how you can make money with it, excuse me, right? When I was doing Rank and Rent, this SEO strategy, 
I used to do it with expired domains because it works so well. And I was doing it for Portuguese-based clients. So in Google, the Portuguese Google, which is in Portuguese, right? It's way, way less competitive than in English Google. So not only was I doing rank and rent, but on top of that, using expired domains, it was like a walk in the park to rank for any keyword I wanted to. And um, quick hint here, if you're just doing SEO for the English market, you're losing out on a ton of money, right? There's more people in the world don't speak English. There's Portuguese, which the whole of Brazil, Portugal, we all speak Portuguese. There's Spanish, Latin America, Spain. There's, I mean, it's insane the amount of people who don't speak English and the amount of people who do SEO who don't target those countries. So if you're one of them people, go out and target these uh, international languages because it just works so good. So again, uh, for this one, I showed you where you could get them. For this one, you're going to go watch them that you can go and watch that video. I'll link it down below in the description on how to use expired domains. And um, the third right here is more or less the same thing, which is PBNs. PBN stands for Private Blog Network. And this is also leveraging expired domains. So again, you can go watch these videos right here, which break down more in depth what a PBN is, how it works and why it's so valuable. But in essence, what it is, so a PBN, a Private Blog Network, as the name says, it's a network of private blogs. So it's a network of a bunch of sites you own. So let's say you own all these sites and all these sites are very, very powerful, right? They're, they're super powerful, like DR 70 plus on all the domains, okay? Traffic above 2000 on all the domains, super niche down, right? A mega, mega, very, very powerful network of a bunch of sites. Well, you what you do is you use these sites and you link them all to the site you want to rank, and because this is a super powerful network, well, the site's going to just jump up, okay? So this is essentially a link building technique using a private blog network, a network of, of private blogs. It's called private because you own the sites right here. You own the, the brands, you own the domains, you can do whatever you want with them, okay? Now, it is black hat because to set up a, a PBN properly, which again, you can go watch the, these videos right here. I teach you how to set up a PBN properly because Google knows about this. So if you have them all, for example, all the same IP address, well, Google knows that you own all these and that you're linking to your site and it'll just like destroy completely all your network. And I I've, I know people who, have, who had this happen to them. So building a proper PBN, you have to cloak it. You have to do not shady stuff. We have to go the extra mile to make sure nobody finds about this. It's a black hat, gray hat technique, but it works insanely well for years, right? For years, I was ranking my sites with PBN links. Now, now I just use a guest posts and niche edits, which quick plug, you can go to tridejournalist.com, log in, then click here on the bottom left, hand, bottom left hand corner, purchase backlinks, and you can purchase niche edits and, uh, and guest posts. And uh, yeah, the results are just insane. I think in this video, I go over some of the results, but uh, yeah, they're a bit more expensive, but they're um, more white hat and, and they work great. So quick plug there. But again, for years, I was using PBMs to rank and they work fantastically. Just be a bit careful, okay? And again, go watch those videos that I mentioned before. Again, I'll, I'll link all this stuff below, don't worry. And uh, yeah, moving forward. Fourth, uh, buying reviews. Uh, this is very black hat, but it works. Now, most people fail at this and get caught because they don't know how to do like how to do this. Not necessarily how to buy reviews, but how to make sure that you're not caught. So you can go and watch this video right here. This video doesn't teach you how to buy reviews, but it teaches you the principles of writing and responding to real reviews, which then you have to apply to when you're buying the reviews. Uh, now, there's a bunch of sites out there who sell reviews. Uh, most of them are super shady, right? Go for one where if you just, I'll, I'll do it, buy Google reviews, right? There's, again, a bunch of them, right? Go for the least shady one. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not affiliated with none of these. I don't think I ever bought not, nothing from these guys. But ask them for the accounts beforehand. And don't just buy reviews from random Google accounts. Ask if they have local guide reviews. What a local guide is, is if I go here to Dallas Plumber, let me just see if I can find here some local guide accounts. I can show you what I mean by this. Let me just open this up right here. A local guide is someone, there you go, who has this badge. It's like a Google account who has this little badge telling them it's a, a, a local guide. So it's basically a Google account um, who leaves reviews that Google trusts more. So Google trusts this review more than this one right here. Okay, so the more you can have on this, the better. And it's harder to get these reviews. Also, you don't want to be buying reviews from a site that, let's say I have a business, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a plumber in, in the USA, okay? This is my business, right? And you are a plastic surgery clinic in, a, in Bali, okay? Now, don't go and buy reviews from a, a business who uses the same account to leave a review here and here, and then a review in a completely different part of the, the world. It's super shady. So ask for 
local guide reviews and make sure that they're local. So only if you're if you own a business in the US, well, make sure you're using just US based accounts. And that goes for all across the world. So it, it does work. Buying reviews fortunately and unfortunately works because people oftentimes, not oftentimes, but sometimes use this to like do uh, one star reviews, which is which is a very bad thing to do and probably illegal as well. Um, but if you're buying them to just be five star reviews for your own for your own business, well, it can work as well. Again, black hat because it's against, of course, Google Terms of Services. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Number six, uh, buying backlinks as a whole, and I, I've I've dived deep into this channel on what backlinks are. You can go watch these two videos right here, which basically break down every single thing you need to know about backlinks, what they are, how they work, what type of backlinks exist, and how to build each one of them. I go over like super in depth, I've talked about this so many times, so go watch those. Now, of course, buying links is is black hat because ideally, according to Google Terms of Services as well, you should be producing great enough content that naturally people will gonna wanna link out to you uh, for free. But nobody does that, it's impossible, it's a pain in the ass. Not impossible, but people don't do this. So. I put it here as black hats, but not necessarily if you do it the right way. If you buy these links, for example, they're done the right way. We actually outreach to the sites and ask them for link placement. So, so yeah, there you go. And final one is, of course, uh, CTR manipulation. Now, this works great for whether you're doing YouTube or, or Google. Uh, what this is basically is, let's say, I'm a plumber in Dallas, right? I want to rank first for this. What you do is you basically hire a, or you can, you can use this software, which basically leverages people all around the world to go on their Google, search for it, scroll down until they find your site, having them click on your site, like as if they're real users, browse around, click places, right? And so if enough people do this enough, so searching for your keyword, scrolling down, clicking your site, if enough people go and undo this, this enough, this is called CTR click through rate manipulation, right? Your manipulation, manipulating, excuse me, the click-through rates and having people search for keywords and clicking on your site over and over and over again. Google will think, okay, why am I ranking these guys above them if they're getting all the clicks? Let me just rank these guys above them. So this is what we call CTR manipulation and you can use this software right here called SERP Clicks. I've used this in the past. I've used this in the past for uh, YouTube as well as Google. Uh, so so yeah, it, it, it works. Uh, so there you go. I'm not affiliated. I'm not affiliated with them in any, any way, shape, or form. But I've used them in the past. You can also use micro workers, which basically, if you just want to go and hire the people themselves, it takes a bit more work. But you can do this as well. And so there you go. And you can go and watch. I think I have a video on this. If I do, I'll put it here right now. I think I have a video on, on going like further on how to do this exactly. So you can watch it. You can watch it if I put it here. If not, well, there you go. But that's it. That, those are the the black hat strategy techniques. Um, I think you should try at your own risk, of course. Because I'd say from less risky to least to more risky. So this is very risky right here. Sip links are very risky. Buying reviews if you do it the wrong way are very risky as well. Uh, this is not risky at all. This is not risky at all. I mean, this can be because let's say, for example, you buy an expired domain that previously was like a, a plumber, plumber site, and your business is a plastic surgery clinic, right? Google will see, okay, how did this plumbing site became all of a sudden two years later a plastic surgery clinic? It's a bit weird. So it's more or less kind of risky, but it does work fantastic. I was never caught. PBNs, not really risky at all if you know how to build the networks. Buying reviews, kind of risky if you do it the wrong way. Buying backlinks, not risky at all. If you buy the, if you buy great quality backlinks, it's not risky at all. And this one's well, not risky at all. I mean, I, 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 it's if you do it the wrong way, of course, but if not, it's not risky at all. So yeah, there you go. These are the techniques. Uh, again, go watch the links in the description to go watch videos for all these ones right here. And uh, if you want to learn how to rank, not rank, but how, if you want to learn how to get mentioned on ChatGPT, Perplexity, Grok, and any other LLM AI-based search engine, go watch these videos right here, which basically teach you step by step how we are ranking our own brand, our own site, this right here, on these AI search engines. And the good thing about this channel is that I'm not just a guru producing content, right? We actively want to bring users through SEO to our to journal CI to, for people to buy our software, which is great, by the way. And so. Every single day I wake up and think, okay, how can I bring more users to this? And so I'm constantly trying new things, whether that's SEO, LM, it doesn't matter, right? So the things I teach you here are things that, are things that work right now. So if you want to learn how we are doing it right now to rank on LMs like ChatGPT, et cetera, go watch these videos right here because it, it works. One of them, one of these videos right here, I showed you how to rank on Grok, which is Twitter's AI search engine. I ranked it in like 10 minutes. I ranked first in 10 minutes. So, so there you go. Go watch this. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and please, Please comment something down below for the algorithm. I need to get this video to more people. So if you can just comment anything, just maybe even comment just the word SEO, that'll be amazing. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.